Hello, my beautiful Leo friends, and welcome to your May 2020 horoscope, where this month, Leo, I'm going to tell you, first of all, we've got 40% of our planets, 40% of our planets heading into retrograde, so we will all absolutely be participating in a shift and a slowdown of some things this month. So don't be surprised when we get to be about mid-month and it's like, whoa. And I mean, I don't know about you guys, but have you already started to feel the energy take that shift, a little bit of like a steady slowdown happening in your world? Let me know down below if you're already experiencing that, because I know that I am feeling it. And as we get through the month, we're going to definitely be experiencing that as well. Now, also this month, Leo, for you, this is a heavy 11th house month. Now, why we care to know that right at the beginning of the reading is two things. One, because we've got so much Gemini energy going on, and this lights up your 11th house, which the 11th house is friends, social groupings, things online, social media, but it's also your long range plans, goals, and designs. What do you want for yourself? What are your aspirations, right? Because so much is running through that particular house, it tells us two things. One, social things, friends, all of this kind of stuff is going to be very important to you this month. So you may be looking for solutions with your friends. Maybe money-making opportunities come from friends. Maybe the value of connecting and relationships come from these social areas, okay? Now, the other thing is because Gemini is a Mercury-ruled energy, because Mercury, the planet itself, will be moving into Gemini very comfortably, we look at in the general horoscope, Mercury energies rule not only your 11th house, but your second house being where Virgo lives as well. So this is why I say your connection, your furthering, your advancement, your desires, your money, your creativity, the values you have are very well rooted in these social areas this month. You want to know that because that's the beauty of the horoscope is giving you a heads up on which direction you can kind of focus in to use the energy the best, okay? Now, if you take a look at the chart, you can see that the right hand side is very, very heavy anyway. So this gives us also the indicator that truly this month you're not out there forcing and pushing your own will. It is a month where you are navigating, adapting and working within relationships as well. So we want to do that to the very best of your ability. Okay. All right, let's jump in and talk about what's happening this month. So right at the beginning of the month, kicking it off hot and heavy, we've got a full moon happening in the energy of Scorpio. Now this is going to light up your fourth house space, Leo. So the fourth house is home, family, real estate, property, women in your lives, family, even ancestors. The ancestors have been speaking like crazy to so many of us. So you could find you have a lot of that going on. But also this is the place of the internal psychological foundation, right? Now in the energy of Scorpio, we're going to the depth of these things. We become very aware of our deepest desires in this area of our life. Do you have a solid work and home foundation under you? You could be answering those questions over the next four weeks, right? What is making you feel secure and grounded in the world at this particular time. Or um, Scorpio energy will also show us where we have power struggle, right? Where are you struggling to fulfill the very desires that you have in this fourth house area of your life? Well, the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So this is your setup to make that shift over this next four weeks. And the next month we're running into um, eclipse season again some more eclipse season so you'll also have course correction energy where the cosmos they strategically show up and it's a conspiracy to help you be successful help you do the soul level work help you do the relationship work so just know at this particular full moon in this fourth house zone it's going to light up an awareness for you of where the struggle but also where the desire in this home zone area is at for you now on the 11th is a, is a busy day We've got Mercury moving into his home sign of Gemini, comfortably lighting up your 11th house space. We communicate better and more easily here. There maybe is a lot of communication going on in a social zone. Goodness knows we are using um, technology like crazy these days, right? But also for my scientists or my researchers out there, this is a day where information becomes readily available to you, right? So if you are a detail finder, this is a wonderful energy for you going all the way until the end of the month. Now, on the same day, we're going to see Saturn step into his retrograde in the energy of first Aquarius and then Capricorn. So Saturn is going to begin this retrograde at one degree of, Sag of Sagittarius, of Aquarius. 
And then he's going to end it all the way down in September at um, 25 degrees of Capricorn, okay? So what's happening first is you've been shown and you've gotten the rumblings of some social things that need to be different, right? Some things in your um, relationships that you're getting ready to go into some relationship level work and you've been shown maybe distance has been created in your relationships for some reason or your ideas of partnerships have become really innovative. Now you're going to get a slow time to review that, but the bigger part of the review energy is going to come as it moves back into your sixth house, right? So what I want you to be very, very mindful of, especially once we get to the July time frame with this Saturn retrograde, is your health needs attention. And this is your mental wellness. This is, um, you know, we've had this full moon in Scorpio. Is your psychological foundation taxing your actual physical health? You're going to want to go back over that because what Saturn's asking you to do in a retrograde here is to reevaluate the solid foundations that you have in these particular areas, right? Saturn wants you to think more seriously about this area. It's been raising the vibration here for you for two and a half years. So you've already seen this. You've already worked on this. Now it's time to be accountable and answer to it, which is beautiful. Does does this area, does do the practices you have in your health zone, your work zone, even your independent work zone, do your daily practices support you in a long range future kind of way? On the 13th, also a very busy day, we've got Mars moving into the energy of Pisces, and then we've got Venus stepping into the beginning of her retrograde. Now, Mars in Pisces is interesting because Mars is action and energy and assertion, and I'm going and I'm doing, I'm shucking and jiving, right? But it's also desire. So in the energy of Pisces, Mars is like, I don't really know what I want. I don't know. I mean, I'm good. You know, let's just feel, let's let, let, let my intuition's guiding me on where I should be going next. And this is happening in your eighth house, which is one of our deepest spiritual houses. So you could certainly feel very led or very guided in this particular area of your life. Maybe even I think for some of you, I'm getting this picture for you, Leo, that it's some of you have been craving um, vulnerability. You've been craving uh, like to, to share something or to like you want to be free from it. You want to detox from something and bring it to a close in your life because you want freedom from it. So this could certainly be what's happening there. Now, I also think because it's the eighth house and it's Piscean energy, relationships could be interesting this month, you know, whether it be the work relationship, the family relationship, the romantic relationship, hell, the relationship of you with you because it's in this eighth house and there's so much joint vulnerability here. Um, it may feel a little confusing. It may feel like you're not quite sure what to do with this, but take the spiritual and intuitive route. This is what Mars and Pisces is brilliant for. As Venus is working her retrograde, she's going to start off at 21 degrees of Gemini and then back up to 5 degrees of Gemini. So the whole thing will be in Gemini. Just look at those particular degrees in your chart. And if you don't have a chart, pull a free one or come get one from me or whoever you trust and work with, okay? You want to identify these in your chart so you can see specifically what you're working on. Because let's just say that you've got you know, a planet who is at zero degrees of Gemini, you want to know when the influence of that planet is really going to get pushed on. So you can kind of whittle down your timing to be a lot more specific to when things would be happening or showing up in your life. That's the purpose of us giving you the degrees. Um, so you can look at them in your chart. Okay. Now, as Venus is retrograding here in Gemini, this is again, the 11th house during a Venus retrograde, we highly suggest you don't make any really big purchases or really big commitments to anything new that comes to your table. Instead, we are reviewing, revising, reconnecting, reunioning with relationships that are about value, Venus, right? That are about, does this have a strong financial value to me? Does going to this job every day, do these friends, does this social group, does this have value to me? In the world of the socials too, because we do still have a fair amount of social distancing on the table, I think this is a wonderful energy and opportunity for you here, Leo, to, to ask yourself, are you adding something of value out into the greater good, right? Are you taking yourself, but also giving something good to, to the people, right? What is, what is it that you have that you're giving or, you know, are you are you bringing humor out? Leos tend to be very, very funny. Or do you have something good that you can add that um, really elevates this next level? The other thing I think is that in relationships specifically, especially friendships and social things, are you taking on too many responsibilities, which is diminishing your ability to have a high level value with what it is that you um, are doing? You know, Mars is in Pisces. What do you want in the area of, of friendships and organizations and your 
your long range goals because your desires might feel a little bit quieted at this time. But the retrograde will keep going, Mars will move on, and then I think you can get some clarity of this um, as we move into June. But give yourself some reflection time during this Venus retrograde. And yes, for the love of everything, Venus can sometimes bring back past relationships into your life. If it happens to be a friendship, like a genuine friendship, like maybe you've never touched each other or seen each other naked. Like if it, there's a genuine friendship, this person could be coming back into your life to help you do something or help you to recognize the value that you've had before that maybe you'd gotten a little bit of lot, little bit lost in. So if a romantic relationship comes back, give it time so you can be sure that it has the staying power it needs to stick after June 25th, okay? On the 14th, we're going to see Jupiter moving into his retrograde, and this is going to be starting at 27 degrees of Capricorn and backing all the way up until 18 degrees of Capricorn in September. Now, Jupiter's retrograde is going to be in your sixth house. Now, Jupiter's retrograde, he asks us to do an honest evaluation of our strengths and our weaknesses that we are bringing to the table, right? You've already been looking at this. This has been two and a half, three years of your daily routine, your work, um, your health, your wellness, how you're being of service to people. You've already been working on this, right? Now, Jupiter is going back and saying, where are you being overconfident? Where are you over-promising and under-delivering? Where do you need more training? Where do you need help here? Where do you need to see the truth right? Jupiter wants the truth. Where do you need to see the truth in this area so that you can have the assistance or the mentorship? Jupiter's the great teacher to show you how to finish this area and leave it strong, show you the wisdom of this area. But wisdom comes by saying, I don't know everything. Please teach me, right? So you'll definitely be under review of that over the next five months. Now, Jupiter is still a benefic energy, so he will bring you benefits in the area of career and health and things like that, but it'll feel like it's trickling in. As well, Venus is the smaller benefic planet, so she's trying to bring benefit as well, but it'll be coming quite, quite slowly, but it is coming, okay? On the 20th, we see the sun move into the energy of Gemini, and on the 22nd, we're going to welcome in a new moon in the energy of Gemini. So the sun is light, heat, life, and vitality. The friendship life is, is heating up or the social life or the social interaction. Maybe you're clearer about some of your plans or your goals or your designs that you want going forward. It's Gemini energy. You're thinking about it. You're connecting. You're curious. And at the new moon, you can plant your seeds of intention for either a fresh start or a fresh perspective here. You just want to bring in a sense of newness here. Maybe you're going to go back to studying something with friends. You want to go back to that online course because now you have time for it, right? Whatever it is, it's a fun and beautiful time for you where anything is possible in this area of your chart, in this area of your life. So take advantage of having a beginning here because if you change nothing, nothing changes, right? So there are good changes available here. As we end the month, we're going to see Mercury, our communication energy, moving into the energy of Cancer. Now, this is going to light up just one house behind you, so the 12th house space, okay? So Mercury and Cancer, our emotions get involved in what we're doing. My security is involved in what I'm thinking. Maybe even I'm going about conversing or making decisions about things in a way that seems a little bit indirect. So I would tell you with Mercury here in Cancer in the 12th house, make sure any decisions that you're making any conversations that you're having happening are having, make sure they're very above board, right? You don't want anything to be hidden, but instead allow Mercury and Cancer to open this vulnerability for you. Open this honesty, open this place where you say, I need nurturing here, I need support here. And by doing this, I think what happens is that it actually ignites some of your 11th house placements and friends and groupings or things like that can show up and lend you the support that you need. As well, you're navigating and melding in relationships like we saw on the right side of the chart. So it could be you lending a hand here as well to help people bring their own things to culmination, to help people see that even though things maybe look dark, the stars still shine really bright in the dark. That's when we, we see them the best, as a matter of fact. So you can kind of be that big Leo light this month, I think, um, as this area gets you prepared for birthday time, which is not too far down the road, okay? All right, my Leo friends, I hope that you are doing well out there. I hope you will join me on the channel for many more eat and greets. That's what I've decided to call that particular segment of collaborations because we're going to have a snack. We're going to talk about astrology. And we've had Nadia Shah, 
Brian Coulter, Sasha Benedetti, um, Shireen Vishmaya. We've had them all over. And Terrence Gardino, Patrick Arundel, Gemini, Brett. There's people coming on over. Elizabeth Grace will be here as well. So I hope that you'll check it out. And we're not just bringing you topics. We're going to be bringing you some techniques and skills that you can apply to your astrology as well, no matter what level you're currently studying at. So I hope you enjoy them and you'll, uh, you'll attend. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you and I'm sending you love. And I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye, Leos.